um, the, um, statistics and application team. Um, and he's interested in uh, distributed optimization and multi-agent system. First of all, I would like to, to thank the, the organizers for uh, inviting me to this uh, great day. So, uh, my name is Pascal Bianchi, and I will uh, present uh, a work about distributed optimization for a multi-agent system. So, this is a joint work with uh, Philippe Sibla, Jacinthe Faure, Walid Hachem, Franck Hutzeler, uh, Jérémy Jakubovic, and Gemma Morel. So here we will uh, consider, this is the, the topic of the talk, we'll consider a network which is a form of uh, N agents, and the agents uh, process some local data and uh, exchange some, some messages uh, in, a, in a graph in order to estimate some uh, global parameter. So this is the problem setting. Basically, we'll represent our network as a, a set of agents. The agents are represented as uh, cycles here, and each agent uh, is provided with a certain local private cost functions, cost function, and the aim is not to find the, the minimum of the, the uh, local cost function, but to find the minimum of the aggregate function. So I, if I compute the sum of all the functions of all the agents, I come up with this uh, black curve here, and the aim is to, uh, to find the, the minimum of this black curve. And the problem is due to the fact that no single agent in the network know uh, where the black curve and so we have to solve the problem distributively. So formally, the problem can be stated this way. We want to minimize the sum of uh, function for uh, n equal to 1 to n of, uh, of uh, fn of x, where capital N here denotes the number of uh, functions or the number of agents, and fn represents the uh, local cost function of agent n. And we will assume that two agents can exchange uh, messages only if they are uh, connected. So there have been numerous work on that problem, starting with the uh, uh, early works of uh, John Tsitsiklis. I will provide two examples, two application examples of this setting, one in the context of wireless sensor networks and the other one in the context of machine learning applications. So I will start with the uh, wireless sensor networks. First, because it is an important uh, application domain, which uh, generated, by the way, some of the method that we'll uh, talk about today. And the second reason is that uh, we first got interested in this uh, wireless sensor network domain, uh, signal processing domain, before realizing that the method, uh, distributed method that we were developing could also be applied to uh, machine learning, large-scale machine learning problems. So in the context of wireless sensor networks, we have a, uh, a bunch of sensors, and each of them gathers some uh, random observation vector. <clears throat> and the aim is to uh, estimate some uh, unknown parameter x, uh, which represents the, the physical environment. So if we want to estimate x in the maximum likelihood sense, we will uh, just write the, the likelihood functions here, here, which is the uh, probability to observe y1 to yn, the observation, given the parameter x. Uh, and provided that we make some uh, independent uh, assumption from the observation from one sensor to another, this uh, likelihood function can be written as a product of the local likelihood of the uh, sensors. So the maximum likelihood estimate writes as uh, x hat. It is the argument of the maximum of a sum, because we, we can pass this equality to the log, of a sum of the local log likelihood functions of uh, the agents. So we are indeed faced with a, with a problem of a minimization of a composite function, as we talked about. And we seek to solve this problem distributively, unless we, want, we don't want the, uh, the agent to share their, their brute uh, data, their brute observations. A second example is a machine learning application. So we, in that case, we have a, a large data set from, formed by a certain number of uh, examples, x and y, couples. And uh, y is the uh, variable to be explained, so it is the response. And x is some uh, explanatory feature vector. 
And the, the aim is to look for a model that relates the features to the response. So um, I will start with a linear regression, so which is a, the most simple case to, to uh, understand. So in that case, we will uh, search for a linear for the to, exp to express the response as a linear combination of the coefficients of the uh, explanatory vector. And the coefficient of this uh, linear combination will be denoted by x, small x. So, and it is the vector we are, we are looking for. So, the linear regression uh, problem writes as the minimization problem over all the uh, training samples of the square error between the, the response y and the predicted response, which is the inner product between the unknown parameter x and uh, the feature vector uh, xi. So, if we want to be a little bit more general, a lot of problem in uh, machine learning uh, can be written as minimization problems, <clears throat> especially uh, as minimization of a sum which extends over all training uh, samples of a certain loss function L, which depends on the unknown parameter X and the training, uh, the training sample, the i training sample, plus possibly some regularization term here, which can be uh, possibly non-differentiable, which is here to uh, penalize the, the occurrence of uh, overly complicated solutions. So it can be that if T is really large, uh, standard algorithm uh, become too complex, and in that case, we, it is beneficial to use a divide and conquer approach in which we split the data into n different batches and we handle the, uh, the batches separately. So once again, we are faced with a problem where uh, we have to minimize a sum of a composite, uh, uh, I mean, a composite function. So the next question is, <clears throat> how do we process these uh, batches? And there are, uh, the answer depends on the particular uh, architecture we are uh, facing with. So on the top, we have a centralized architecture where, where we have a single processing unit. And so each data batch will be uh, treated by, uh, by the same processing unit. In the middle, we have a parallel architecture where we, we will uh, assign one batch to one worker or one agent. And uh, we are also have a master which, whose role will be to aggregate or to reduce the agent's output. And in the, at the bottom, we have a distributed infrastructure where, again, we have one agent for uh, one batch. But the agent will uh, cooperate by using message passing in, the, in their uh, neighborhood. Another question is how do we implement the, uh, the algorithm, the optimization algorithm? And the algorithm can either be synchronous or asynchronous. And by synchronous, I mean that uh, all batches are processed simult simultaneously during one iteration. And by asynchronous, I mean that we will randomly select uh, one batch at each iteration and process, process only uh, one, uh, one batch at a time. And the main focus of this talk will be about distributed and asynchronous algorithm. So here is the outline of my talk. I will uh, first briefly mention uh, distributed gradient descent. Then I will uh, talk about uh, a popular method, which is the alternating direction method of multiplier, which is a famous method, which uh, uh, ranges uh, uh, beyond uh, distributed optimization. But I will show that it can be used in order to, uh, to distribute an optimization problem uh, uh, on a graph. And next, I will switch to random coordinate descent. And I will explain how uh, the idea of random coordinate descent uh, can be exploited in order to design asynchronous algorithms. And finally, finally I will end up with some recent work uh, where we derive uh, some, uh, some generalization of the ADMM, which allows for uh, more ease of computation of implementation. So I'll start with the distributed gradient descent. So the principle of the algorithm is, uh, is quite simple. Each agent, n, so n here denotes the, the, uh, the node number of the agent number <coughs> index, and k denotes the time, so the iteration number. And each agent has its own uh, estimate, xn, of the solution, of the minimizer of the problem. And uh, at, from, uh, to go from iteration k to iteration k plus 1, we have two steps. First, the local step in which each agent will perform a local uh, one step of a gradient descent so, and generate this way a temporary estimate, x uh, tilde n, which is equal to x n k minus gamma k nabla fn of x n k, where gamma k here is a certain positive step size. And once this is done, the agent will communicate together and merge their uh, temporary estimates. So the final estimate xnk plus 1 of the node n will be equal to a linear combination of the uh, temporary estimate that it just received from its neighbor. And here the coefficients a and m of this linear combination, uh, uh, linear combination should satisfy so certain uh, technical constraint, which uh, can be, by the way, so quite stringent in some situations. So the, the 
convergence rate of this kind of method has been uh, so roughly uh, studied in, uh, in uh, various works uh, and also variants of these uh, algorithms. And the, the, the point uh, to look at is that, uh, in general, we need to use a decreasing step size, which is uh, a little bit of pity because this uh, will generate sublinear convergence rate. The, the convergence of this algorithm has no uh, chance to be uh, exponential. And so this is, uh, this is unlike the centralized case where we know that under, uh, if we have a smooth and really great ball shape uh, function, we would achieve uh, linear exponential convergence rates. So I will come back to that point later. Actually, uh, the algorithm that we uh, studied is a little bit more involved than this because we added some uh, problems. First, the problem of uh, asynchronism. In fact, uh, at some uh, time in the network, some agents may be active and other may not be. We may have some random link failures in the algorithm. We also introduced some noise in the computation of the, of the gradient here. Uh, this is uh, to be re related to stochastic approximation algorithm, where sometimes you, you don't know exactly what is your, your function fn. You, you can estimate the gradient only up to some uh, noise. And we also introduced some constraints, so we, are, we are investigate actually a distributed projected gradient algorithm. And, uh, okay. <clears throat> and so it can be shown that uh, XNK will converge to uh, uh, KKT point uh, X star of the problem. So it means uh, actually if the problem is convex, uh, uh, global minimum of the, of, the, of the problem. And under certain circumstances, we can analyze the uh, estimation error XNK minus X star when properly renormalized by the, by the square root of the step size gamma K, should converge to a, a Gaussian uh, distribution, a Gaussian variable with zero mean, and with a certain uh, limiting covariance matrix, uh, which is the sum of two terms, sigma opt and sigma net. Sigma opt is the, the covariance that we would have obtained in a purely centralized setting if we had access to uh, all the data at once at it. And uh, sigma net is the excess variance, which is due to the distributed setting. And so interestingly, uh, we can uh, characterize the protocols, the communication protocols, such that uh, the excess variance sigma net is equal to zero. <coughs> Now I will switch to the second part of my talk, the alternating direction method of multipliers. So I will just briefly introduce the method in a generic way, regardless from the distributed multi-agent setting. So the principle is, is as follows. Uh, we want to minimize the sum of two functions, f of x plus j of mx, where m is a certain matrix, and f and j are uh, two convex functions. And the, uh, the point is that if we had f alone or g alone, this would be an easy problem to solve. And the, 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 the tricky part is really that we have the sum of two functions, and we want to split this optimization problem in half. So in order to do that, we can introduce an auxiliary variable, z, which is equal to mx. And under the, the constraint that z is equal to mx, solve uh, the mini minimize f of x plus j of z. And this is clearly an equivalent problem. So we can do as usual and write the augmented Lagrangian. This is a function which depends on three variables in, the, in that case, x and z, which are the, the primal variable, and a Lagrange multiplier lambda, and which can be written as f of x plus j of z, plus the inner product uh, lambda mx minus z, plus uh, uh, this uh, penalization rho over 2 mx minus z to the square. And the IDMM algorithm works like this. So it, at each iteration k, it will update three variables, the x, z, and lambda. First of all, we start with the x, and we will minimize the uh, Lagrangian with respect to x, but letting z and lambda being fixed. Next, we will uh, update with respect to z by minimizing, minimizing the Lagrangian, but this time x and lambda will be fixed, and we will only optimize, uh, minimize with respect to z. And the next step is to update the Lagrange multiplier like this. And this is indeed a splitting algorithm because if you look at the first step of the equation uh, of the uh, of the algorithm, then if we you want to minimize this function with respect to x only, then you don't need j. So the first step involves only the function f and not the function j. So it is indeed a splitting algorithm. So now we will apply this ID. When, uh, we'll go back to our problem and apply this uh, ADMM. So. The, uh, I recall the problem, we want to minimize the sum of uh, fn, of some function fn, for n equal 1 to capital N. And the main trick in order to express this uh, as an uh, ADMM-like problem is to introduce this function f, which, will, which is defined on a wider and broader uh, space, which is uh, uh, the space to the power n, so capital X to the power n, and to which, to each x1 to xn, associates the sum of the fn of xn. 
And clearly, uh, the initial problem is equivalent to the problem in, uh, in red here, which is the, to minimize f of x plus iota of x, where iota of x is actually an indicator function. So it is equal to 0 when x1 is equal to x2 is equal to xn. That is when all the components of the vector x agree and uh, to plus infinity otherwise. So clearly the problem in red is equivalent to the problem in, uh, to the initial optimization problem, except that we switched from a one-dimensional problem to an n-dimensional problem, but which is fakely a n-dimensional problem because the, the solution is constrained to live in a certain one-dimensional space anyway. And by the way, this, uh, we will refer to this one-dimensional space as a consensus space. So we have two, a sum of two functions. We can use ADMM to split the, this problem in half. This will be my function f, this will be my function j. If we do that, we will come up with a certain algorithm, which will be actually a parallel algorithm, and which works like this. So from uh, iteration k to iteration k plus 1, we have, uh, it goes like this. So each node has to update two variables, uh, a variable x, xn, and a variable lambda n. And so the first step is that the, all the workers, all the nodes, transmit their current uh, estimate of the minimizer to a certain uh, master, which will compute the average of this uh, estimate, which I will denote by x bar. And this master will transmit back uh, the, uh, this x bar to uh, all agents. And once this is done, we have only no local computation. In particular, uh, the agent n is able to update its uh, local variable, lambda n and xn, by just applying this equation. And these equations only involve the function uh, fn, which is the private cost function uh, of this agent n. So this problem is a uh, parallel. Uh, this algorithm is parallel, but it is still not distributed on the graph. So the next step is to explain how we can uh, slightly modify the expression of the consensus constraint in order to uh, make this uh, algorithm uh, distributed on a graph. <clears throat> and so the idea is the following. If we have a, a graph of agent, a network of agent, and we have, uh, then we will introduce uh, some subset of agent, A1, A2 to AL. Uh, and typically, this subset can be identified to the edges of the graph. So for instance, I can define uh, A1 to be equal to the edge 1, one 3. I can define A2 to, the, to be the edge 2, 3. And I can define A3 to be some, something uh, some, somewhat larger. For instance, the set 3, 4, 5. If I want to ensure the consensus constraint on the whole network, what I can do is first force x1 and x3 to be equal. So I will force. Uh, the, the value of the, uh, the estimate of agent 1 to be equal to the uh, estimate of agent 3. And similarly, I can force x2 to be equal to x3. And I can force uh, x3 and x4, x5 to be equal. And if I do that, of course, if 1, 3 agree, if 2 and 3 agree, and if, on the other hand, 2, 4 and 5 agree, it means that all the, all the nodes in the network agree. So based on, the, on this idea, we can reformulate the uh, consensus constraint as follows, uh, we will, uh, the initial optimization problem would be uh, equivalent to the minimization of f of x plus j of mx, where m is a certain matrix, uh, such that mx is a, is a big vector whose blocks are uh, exactly the blocks which corresponds to the components of the graph. So the first block of uh, mx is x1, x3. The second is x2, x3, x3, x4, x5. And j is a certain indicator function, so it is equal, either equal to 0 or 2 plus infinity. And it is equal to 0 only on the vectors uh, which have this form. So alpha, alpha, beta, beta, delta, delta, delta. Which means that we are forcing this vector mx to have this, uh, this form. So we are forcing consensus. So we can now apply the ADMM uh, on, on that problem and get an algorithm. So, and this, the algorithm will be uh, distri distributed. It works like this. So once again, each node has to update two variables, one xn and uh, lambda n. And to go from uh, iteration k to k plus 1, we have uh, uh, first to activate each component. So uh, the nodes which are in the same component with H will exchange their x values and will compute the average. So we do that for the first component, for the second one, and for the third one. So we compute the uh, component-wise average of the, uh, of the estimates, and then we only have local computation at, at the node level. Uh, each node is able, once again, to uh, solve uh, this, uh, to update its value, its parameters, by just uh, solving one optimization problem which depends on its own function fn, and that's all. Uh, we have also some uh, convergence uh, rate results uh, uh, of this algorithm. So, uh, 
actually, we, if we assume that the functions are really, that there exists a unique minimizer and that the functions are really smooth uh, around this minimizer, we can show that the, for any n, the estimation error xnk minus x star, uh, x star being the minimizer, behaves as uh, alpha uh, to the power k. So it is uh, an exponential convergence. This fact, uh, where alpha is a sum constant, which is uh, less than one, and this fact were already noticed in a previous paper by Shi et al, where they get non-asymptotic bounds on the error, but uh, this bounds uh, turns out to be really <coughs> pessimistic. And in a recent paper, we obtained some uh, explicit and tight characterization of this value of alpha. So as we, ca as we can see here, the, uh, the uh, this curve represents 1 over k times the logarithm of the error, and it reaches uh, the, uh, this value log alpha, whereas the uh, previous bound is uh, quite away from uh, what happens. And so in some contexts, it can be interesting to, to have this value of alpha because it helps to relate the convergence rate of this ADMM to the particular topology of the network and in particular to, to also to uh, one important parameter, which is the step size of the algorithm, rho. So it, uh, it, it helps to provide some guidelines on the way to choose the, the network or, or, the, or the step size. So now we, I will switch to uh, uh, another part of my talk, which is the random coordinate descent. So the motivation is the following. Uh, the distributed ADMM that I presented is, uh, as one inconvenient, it is synchronous. So it means that all agents must complete their computation before combine. So if I am an agent and I, if I just finished my computation at some time, then I will uh, have to wait. The next, time I, I, the next thing I do is, is that I wait until all the agents in the network finished also their computation. So our, our objective from now on is to, will be to allow for asynchronism. In order to do that, we will uh, rewrite, so it is a well-known fact actually that the ADMM can be written as a particular case of a fixed point algorithm. So it has been noticed before, uh, and uh, so the ADMM writes as zeta k plus one is equal to j of zeta k. Well, this zeta k here is a certain quantity uh, which uh, which is which should be thought of as the summary of the variable in in the ADMM. So from this zeta k, I can recover all the variables of the ADMM. And this mapping j is a certain function which is actually not exactly a contraction in the in the Picard sense, but almost a contraction. It is a, uh, called a Fermi Fermi non-expansive. Uh, operator and anyway for, for this kind of mapping which are almost contractions we also have a fixed point theorem holding if we want to re, uh, obtain a, a uh, asynchronous algorithm we will look a little bit further at this uh, fixed point iteration by introducing the uh, block components of this vector zeta so we, we introduce zeta 1 zeta 2 to zeta capital L as the component of this vector zeta and regarding the uh, previous distributed ADMM uh, problem, this vector zeta 1 should be thought of as the uh, gathering or the, the variables that are uh, handled by the, the block, by, by the, the nodes of the first component of the graph, and so on. So now if we want uh, an asynchronous algorithm, we just want the nodes within one component to be active at the same time. So what we can do very easily is to activate some component L and to update the variables that are in this block, zeta L, which corresponds to the else component, and for the other, uh, for the other component, just maintain the value of zeta to, to the former value. And this will generate uh, automatically an asynchronous algorithm, where uh, at one time I have only the node in the component L working. Of course, the difficulty in that is to prove that this algorithm still converges because we, we obtained a, a highly degraded version of the, the former fixed point algorithm. This is no longer a fixed point algorithm and we should uh, uh, prove that it, it converges. So, and uh, we provide a proof recently. Indeed, this algorithm still converges to the sort fixed point of J, of the initial mapping J, provided that we choose the components, the active components at, at random. And this is true regardless to the, to the distribution that we choose on the, on the active components. Okay, and uh, so the main trick be behind the proof is to, to show that uh, whatever the, the fixed point uh, zeta star uh, of, uh, of this mapping J that you choose, actually the, the sequence zeta k minus zeta star will be stochastically decreasing, which, is, which means that in, in a, some stochastic sense you will get closer and closer to, the, uh, to, the, uh, to any fixed point. 
So I will not go into the details of the equation. What is it? This is the algorithm. What is important is not so much the, uh, the equations, but the fact that at some point, uh, K, at some iteration K, you have only, you activate just one component. And the nodes that are not activated here in blue just uh, maintain the value to their, uh, to maintain their, their variables to their former value. And by the way, we can also show a linear convergence of this method even in a random setting under convenient assumptions on the, uh, on the function fn. Uh, just a small remark, the, uh, the, the, the algorithm which I mentioned is uh, indeed asynchronous, but it is asynchronous at the node level in the sense that uh, if I wake up, uh, if I activate, I have to activate at least one component at each time, and one component is at least two nodes. It is typically an edge of the graph, so if, if I activate one edge of the graph, then uh, it means that the algorithm is not really synchronous because uh, two, works, two nodes should work together. But actually, it is not a big deal because this problem can be easily solved by just introducing some virtual nodes uh, on each edge of the graph and providing each virtual node with a null objective function. And in that case, if you, if you apply exactly the same algorithm on, on this new graph with this virtual node, you will get an asynchronous algorithm at the node level. So uh, I will now switch to the last part of my talk. We'll extend a little bit this ADMM algorithm. In fact, the problem of the uh, one limitation of the ADMM is that each node must solve an optimization problem at each step of the algorithm. So if I look further at what the, uh, the agent N does, it solves this optimization problem. It computes a, a, a proximal operator, actually, of the function uh, Fn. So in, s in some cases, it can be uh, too demanding to, because I have to assume that I have a black box at the, at the agent level that is able to do that. And I said that uh, ADMM has linear convergence rate, whereas uh, stochastic uh, gradient, uh, uh, distributed gradient has sublinear convergence rate. But in fact, these two methods are not really uh, comparable because I do not make the same assumption on the computational abilities of the agents. So in order to, to bridge the gap between these two methods, what we would like to do is to provide our, uh, ourselves with a new model where this function Fn is actually the sum of two functions, a function Fn bar and a function R where fn bar is the, the complicated function. It is the, the data fitting term, typically. And this term can be handled only through the computation of its gradient. Whereas the term r of x here uh, is supposed to be simple. For, for instance, we can uh, select r to be equal to 0, or to, to be equal to the L1 norm, typically. And we want to replace this equation 1, which is the equation that we get if we apply an ADMM, to another equation which is more easy to, to implement. Uh, it is exactly so replace equation one by two means we just replace this function fn bar here by a linearized version of fn bar. So in order to solve this optimization problem, it's, I just have to compute the gradient uh, of this function fn bar. So the problem is much more e it's easier to solve. So uh, in order to do that, we, uh, we proposed uh, some extension of the ADMM. So the, pr the problem setting is exactly the same as for the ADMM. Here, we, this function f will be, will be decomposed as f bar plus r. And we, uh, again, once again, we just want to compute the gradient of f bar. And this uh, algorithm, we, which we have called ADMM plus, uh, works exactly the same as ADMM, except for the fact that we, re we will replace the uh, Lagrangian, the standard Lagrangian, by a linearized version of the Lagrangian. So here, this function uh, f has been replaced by a linearized version of it in the neighborhood of the previous estimate xk. And so uh, this ADMM plus actually includes uh, ADMM as a special case. Uh, I also mentioned that a related algorithm can be found in the uh, Ouyang uh, uh, 2013, and uh, also in a, a different context. I mean, they, they assume decreasing step size, uh, and the algorithm is a little bit different, but there are some relations. And uh, this ADMM plus is actually, the convergence proof is actually quite easy because it can be seen as a variant of a, a recent uh, algorithm uh, which has been proposed by Vu and Conda recently. So in fact, if you, uh, uh, you can relate this algorithm to, uh, to the Vukonda algorithm. And by the way, it uh, bridges the gap between the Vukonda algorithm and the ADMM. It proves that uh, the ADMM can be seen as a particular case, a special case of the Vukonda algorithm, which is uh, noticeable. And so now, if we want to use this algorithm in order to derive an asynchronous and distributed uh, uh, optimization algorithm, 
we just have to do the same thing as before. Write this ADMM plus algorithm as a, a fixed point algorithm. Zeta k plus one is equal to T of zeta k, where zeta k is a summary of the variables of the ADMM plus, and T is a certain mapping which enjoys, again, good pro uh, contracting uh, properties, which are contracting properties which are very similar to those of J. So we have a fixed point uh, theorem once again, and we can apply coordinate descent, just as we did for ADMM, and in that case, we will get an asynchronous and distributed algorithm. So I, don't, I do not write the algorithm, I just uh, provide some numerical uh, illustrations. So here we have a certain graph. We, uh, we have applied a considered logistic regression problem with a L1 regularization term. And so this is the loss function, the decrease of, of the loss function as a function of the number of iteration. In red, this, the red curve is uh, the ADMM plus, and the blue curve is the distributed stochastic, uh, actually subgradient algorithm. So the, my talk is uh, almost finished. I, I just want, wanted to finish with a, uh, a small remark that might sound a, a little bit out of context here, but still. So if we are able to handle the distributed case, uh, we are also able to handle the centralized case, uh, a fortiori. And so if we go back to the initial problem where, where we want to minimize the sum uh, of the function fn in a purely centralized setting, which means that I, su I assume that I have only one uh, processing unit that will, uh, that will handle the batch one after the other, uh, then I can uh, just reformulate this problem as the minimization of the sum of fn of xn plus this function iota of x, which is the indicator function of the consensus, consensus space. Uh, I can apply ADMM plus on it. On top of that, I can apply the idea of random coordinate descent, and I will get an algorithm. And this algorithm is, uh, works that way. At each iteration, we will select one batch at random and compute a gradient at the, uh, of the function at the point x and k. So in, this is very similar to a stochastic uh, approximation algorithm. In fact, this, uh, this, uh, the algorithm that we will get if, you, if we do that is, uh, is, uh, can be casted into uh, the family of uh, a stochastic gradient descent or a stochastic average gradient, uh, which has been proposed by uh, Nicolas Leroux and, and co-authors, or, or by a, or, uh, a recent work also by uh, Julien Meral, uh, which, for, uh, which uh, Francis Bach referred to just uh, uh, one hour ago. And we have uh, some very preliminary results. So in, in, in this uh, centralized case, again, in the case of logistic regression and L1 reg uh, regularization. So I would like to stress the fact that re these results are, are really uh, preliminary. We should still uh, test this, uh, this algorithm on, on much more data sets uh, to, to validate it. And, uh, and the tuning also of the method is very tough. So, uh, so it is difficult to be fair to, co to compare the methods. And, uh, but uh, at least this curve shows that this uh, ADMM plus, this stochastic version of the ADMM plus might have a good potential even to handle uh, uh, centralized uh, stochastic approximation problems. So when this uh, concludes my talk, thank you for your attention. Some questions? Thank you for your talk. Uh, I was just wondering about this uh, picture. Uh, you, you have number of iteration in x-axis. This means that at each iteration, your algorithm just uh, activate one node. One node, yes. Yeah? So if you consider uh, an asynchronous functioning, this means that all nodes work uh, to together. So you have... Uh, number of node times faster than uh, you should here? No, uh, Almost, actually no? I activate one node at a time and only this node is working, is, uh, is performing a computation. So yeah. at, at, one, uh, at each iteration uh, of the algorithm here, I, uh, I am visiting exactly 1,000 training samples. But, but you, in practice you, you could activate all nodes together, no? Uh, I could, but then uh, the algorithm will, would not be uh, asynchronous anymore. I, I mean, they can. Um, my question was about iteration. Iteration is a, a network-wide concept here, and not a, a not local concept. Actually, this is a centralized method. Uh, okay. Uh, this uh, this is a purely centralized method. So I have some batches. They are they are splitted. I pick one batches. I I process it, and then uh, I bring it back. Uh, I bring it back uh, to, into the set of batches. Then I pick another batch, and I process it. That's.
Thank you for your talk. Uh, just a question on the asynchronous version of the algorithm. Uh, you said that uh, it was a consequence, the, the, the property of asynchronous uh, is a consequence of, uh, um, of stochastic coordinate descent, that is correct? It's a, this is a, the, the question. And the, 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 the second is, uh, uh, what does it bring, the fact that you have an asynchronous version of the model? What does it bring to the work? Uh, so, uh, in fact, I will start with the second question. So, yeah. the, the fact that uh, we have a, an asynchronous model, the problem with, is with a, to have a synchronous algorithm is that uh, uh, all the agents, the, the, the actual wall clock time of uh, running time of your algorithm will be conditioned by the slowest agent. So, uh, at one iteration, you, have, uh, you need all the agents to, to finish their computation. So uh, if you are an agent and you finish your, your computation, what you really want to do is to start another one, is to start a, another iteration. So that's the answer to, to the second question. And to, about the, the first question, mm, yes, uh, uh, indeed, you're, you're right. So, uh, uh, so once again, this is, uh, this is the algorithm. So it is a fixed point algorithm. And uh, each block here in this, uh, of, of this zeta corresponds to the variables that have uh, uh, that are handled by, uh, by some nodes, by a pair of nodes. So if you just want to activate one pair of nodes at a time, then you have to set uh, the uh, zeta 1k plus 1 to be uh, the former value. You activate, you change the value only of a certain part of the variables. It's, and that leads you to, a, to an asynchronous algorithm naturally. I mean, you, you have to write it down, but it does. So one question, regarding, so did you look at um, or compare to asynchronous uh, dual averaging? We, because, we, because the question is that um, the, the amount of communication, what's the amount of communication you have here? Uh, you have like twice uh, like because of the auxiliary variables. So did you look a little bit into, the, into that? Uh, compare uh, between the synchronous and asynchronous mode, you mean? Uh, asynchronous and asynchronous dual averaging. Uh, actually, the, uh, what do you mean asynchronous by asynchronous dual averaging? You could use that as well, right? Yeah. yeah yes, uh, but this would be a first-order method. Yeah. Yes. I mean, the, no, the, the, the communication... The co this communication the no, the, the communication, the cost, is, is totally comparable. Because at each, at each iteration of the algorithm, you have to communicate and exchange one, va one value with, uh, with, uh, with your neighbors. So, and this is true for uh, uh, dual, dual, uh, distributed dual averaging, and uh, this is true also for this, this method. Maybe I have a question. Uh, so, um, in your asynchronous algorithm, I can think of two different ways of thinking of an asynchronous algorithm. One in which, one in which uh, any node can read the current set of, uh, I mean, the current information that it has. I'm sorry. And sorry could you repeat the question? So, in, I didn't finish the question. So, in the scheme that you have, you, 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 so you sort of assume, the one that's written here, that the computation is done instantly at a node, and so that essentially no other node can be starting a computation while the current node is, is, is doing the processing. So, you assume that, in fact, each node is doing its, computa its starting and finishing its computation uh, almost instantly, and that no other node has the time to start its computation. Yes. That's a, that's a very good uh, question, a very good remark. Yes, actually, it is a, it is a model. Uh, so, uh, in fact, what we, uh, what we would like to, to do uh, next is to, uh, to also introduce uh, latency in the, in the communication, in order that if one node just finished the computation, uh, he finished the computation with, uh, with the variables that he had so, uh, of the other agents uh, somewhere in the past. So, we would like to do that, yes. This would In, in your uh, asynchronous asynchronization case, uh, uh, I, I don't uh, I don't understand. It's for uh, reduced uh, since uh, since you should update every node uh, uh, after the after each update. Uh, I think this is just this will just reduce the 
uh, memory needed will not reduce the time of calculation, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I did not fully uh, get the, the question. Uh, mm. um, in the I'm sorry, I point. I the case. Uh, every node, uh, uh, you, every time, every each time you, you pick a node and uh, you calculate for this, this node and uh, you pass the information to other nodes. Yes. Uh, I think this, this, this just reduced the, the, mer the memory required to, ca to calculate. It won't, uh, it won't uh, reduce the time needed to calculate since it's not, this is not paralyzed, par paralyzed, uh, par 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 yeah. Yes. Um, the calculation is not parallel. Uh, so, uh, I mean, yes, uh, I suggest that we, we speak about it after the, the, the talk. All right. Let's thank the speaker again. Hello? Okay. Um, so this concludes the, this day. So I have a number of uh, acknowledgement to, of thanks to, to give right now after these talks. First, I would like to, thanks, to thank uh, all the speakers because they've made a great job and we, if we are here, it's because of them. So first the speaker, then the LabEx, of course the LabEx Bezu who funded the, this, uh, this day. And this is uh, thanks to them that every one of us uh, get the lunch, so that's great. And there will be the cocktail after, uh, which will be even better, I hope. Um, so uh, the, the LabEx is represented here by Philippe Loubaton, who will be the next uh, chief officer, or something like that. <laughs> um, and then I would like to thank also everyone at Essier, especially Dominique Perrin, the, the director of Essier, but also the staff at Essier, Everyone you've, you've seen and the one you don't see behind the glasses and uh, they, they, they made everything available like the video. Uh, hopefully the video will be available quite soon thanks to a new process that we are testing here. We'll see that. Um, and uh, of course I would like to thank the, the person who helped us to organize the, the day. It was very not easy for, for everyone to, to, to organize that. And uh, last but not the least, uh, the students that help us to, to make the registration, to, to give the students and colleagues, and colleagues who help us to, to make this registration or to give the micro or everything that uh, is discarded but is very important in practice to make the day works. And uh, well, a last thank to Igor Caron uh, who helped us in asking a lot of questions today and uh, <laughs> Uh, especially in the, diff the, the, in, the, the, in the diffusion of the information. Most of you probably have heard of this day thanks to him, thanks to his blog. So, uh, well, thanks to everyone, and I would like a big upload, this upload to, to everyone for that. So the, well, the cocktail is just around the, in the, the next to the bar, right, right there. And uh, thanks to the nice weather, you will be able to take a glass and go outside. Just uh, in front of uh, 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 Adessier, there is a nice view there in, in which you can see the pont. <laughs> On the left.